welcome to another episode of Harp Scorton. And I have a pretty cool guest for this particular show. One of my favorite guys had the opportunity to play with him a little bit in the NBA. I've played with a lot of different people. So this guy was one of the most underrated players in the NBA, in my opinion. And it's the great DA, better known as Daryl Armstrong. Man, welcome to Harp's Court, man. What's up, Harp? How you doing, man? I'm good, man. Appreciate you having me. You know, it's crazy. I can go anywhere with you. Yeah. We're friends. You oh, know, yeah. we have been friends for a long time. Long time. So I can go a lot of different places, man. But, you know, I kind of want to start away from basketball. Mm -hmm. To me, that makes more sense when yep. you, you're doing podcasts, things of that nature. And, you know, I, you're very unique. You, you went to an all-black college. Yep. A far cry, in all due respect, from where I went to school. I went to school at the University of Illinois, right? Yeah. One of the nice schools, right? <laughs> it was like really 45,000 nice. people at the time when I went there, D. Yeah, y'all got per diem. We, we, <laughs> we got oodles and noodles, okay? <laughs> we did. <laughs> we think. did get per diem. But, man, I, I just want to hear what that experience was like because uh, black college is different. I don't care how you slice it. I wish that I had that opportunity? Well, um, for, for me, uh, you know, uh, I was really this close not even going to school. Yeah. You know, because I really wanted to play football, but um, and I, wasn't get, I didn't get no scholarships in football, you know, mm. especially being uh, I was a wide receiver slash kicker. I did more kicking duty. Um, and so, you know, for me to get into um, a historic black college yeah. um, in Fayetteville, North Carolina, with Fayetteville State was that was uh, – was a special thing with that I didn't realize what, what I, I was getting myself into and, <laughs> and all the things that um, you know would transpire when I got there from you know making walking on making a team in football walking on making a team in basketball running track you know uh, wow. you know cross country but um, and then you know also getting the education so uh, for me it was uh, very special that. I had the opportunity to bond with a lot of cats, you mm -hmm. know, even to this day. Uh, it's funny you you bring it up because I was talking to one of my teammates. And I always talked about, uh, we always talk about, you know, our, our past, you know, where we came from. Because he's, yes. he's a pastor, he's a preacher now. And uh, so he always called me and, and um, you know, we trying to put something together where we get all our guys back together. Even uh, future basketball players from Fayetteville State. Ex ball players from Fayetteville State, even from girls to guys, to, to we're gonna do something September the third at Fayetteville State for a football game. We're gonna tailgate and cook out and just bring everybody back together, uh, you know. Because uh, a lot of times when you leave school, you go and you go your way, yeah. and it's, sometimes it's hard to stay in contact with people. So that's the bond that we have, and that's why we're trying to get back together. Uh, you know, from the stepping, you know, the Q's, the Capos, <laughs> the Deltas, the uh, uh, AKAs to all of them, you know. Uh, you know, it, that was something new for me and, and yeah. watching that. You know, I was out there partying in my first semester. I said, hey, you got to get it together because you're right. going to flunk out of this right. dog on school. <laughs> and I did. So, like so, I say, so, it was great. So let me ask you this, D.A. What, what do you think the biggest difference in, say, going to, I don't want to exaggerate too much, say, going to Clemson? Opposed to an all-black school, what, what, what's the biggest difference you think? Well, I mean, for for, for them, they they have, um, and I don't want to say it the wrong way. They have they have a lot of resources. In all due respect, yeah, they have um, yeah. they have the big time money. They they have the big time programs. Um, you know, they get the best players. You know, I, I don't care. They, I know a lot of them probably get paid to go there. You know, what I'm saying that that happens, and it's still happening. But you know, at the end of the day, uh, that's what they have over a lot of you know black colleges. But for me, uh, going there, you know, um, you have to go to class to pass. You know, you ain't no you can miss whatever day. Mm. You miss three days at, at a black college uh, in the classroom, they drop you automatically. So that made me focus in, made me go to class, and, and I needed. I'm not the smartest and brightest one. I got common, great common sense. But I'm not the brightest one that could just walk in there and be like, all right, let's take this test. No, I have to study. Mm -hmm. and I have to prepare have to myself. Yeah. You know, and 
So for me, I thought that was great because a lot of times if you do go to one of the, the big um, university, white colleges, whatever you want to call them, um, a lot of times you, <laughs> you, you don't have to go to class. You know, you basically just, you know, doing what you do. And, and then when it's time to take a test, I guess, you know, you yeah. take that test. Or oh, somebody slip you the test. You know? <laughs> that which happens. I, that, that which happen. happens. Which happens. I mean, it happens in black colleges. It happens in, in white college too. So, I love it. You know, but um, but that's that's probably the big difference. The the, the big time sports, the big time programs. Um, you know, but once again, I mean, I, if I had to do it all over again, that was I'm, my next question. I'm doing it the same way. I'm doing it the same way because it taught me how to grind. It taught me how to be hungry about things, uh, you know, uh, invest my – and that's one thing I was talking about, my guy. I, I invested in a lot of people with friendship, mm-hmm. um, invested a lot of people with coaches and, and things like that. Uh, you know, I know people invest with money, but for me, investing in people – and friendship is, is way bigger than just, you know, getting money all the time or doing this because mm. I, I, I can relate and call people up and they can call me up. And uh, it's always good to fellowship. I believe in that. Uh, it keeps the soul young. Mm. You know? Amen. I, you know, I, and I'm not exaggerating when I say this. You're one of my best friends as far as cohesion and kind of really knowing me in depth, mm-hmm. me knowing you in depth. Yeah. A lot of people might not realize, but we played together in Orlando. Yeah. Um, early in your career, late in my career. And there, I, I'll let you tell the story, even though I know the story. My, my, my one-year-old daughter yes. got into a, uh, a pool accident. She mm-hmm. fell in the pool and yeah. was brain dead yeah. for a long time. And, man, I think why I have so much respect and love for you is because, man, like a soldier, you were with me every step of the way. I mean, I, I, you know, um, you know, a lot of people don't understand uh, the, the the things that we have, mm-hmm. you know, the things that you have taught me, the things you know you've been through in the, the league at that time, um, and a lot of times you you teach guys. I don't know. I always because I don't I don't know I don't I don't know if people realize, you know, your character, how funny you are. <laughs> you know, you laugh, you smile. You know, those things go a long way with me. Uh, yeah, I, I don't like to be around serious people all the time you know even when i play golf i don't like hey man don't bring that serious stuff out here this ain't Mm -hmm. the pga that's a fact you know (laughs) so but um you know when your your daughter went through that we 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 was at a restaurant i'm not for sure Mm -hmm. what restaurant we was eating and all of a sudden you (sighs) you jumped up and took off and you know not knowing what was going on and and found out what was what was happening and um you know when you got kids um you know, you, you want to always make sure your kids have a chance to do big things when it comes to, you know, from schooling to getting out in this world, make a difference in this in, in the community of all these things that, that, you know, they get the opportunity to, to be a parent. You know, we don't, you know, we don't want to, I, I know I don't want to um, have to bury none of my kids. Mm. Uh, I think that's the worst pain for a parent um, to go through that. And I seen my, my, my aunt, Uncle, they went through it when I, matter of fact, when I played with Orlando and um, playoff series, and my kid, my one of my cousins got got killed on a parking spot. So you know, when you see things like that, um, you know you can relate, especially when you got kids. So for me, just you know, making sure you are, right, you know, because uh, every, you know, basketball. But you were there, man. Yeah. I'm talking about yeah. like basketball, to the wee hours of yeah. the morning. Basketball right? is important, but you know, um, to make sure you are right mentally and. and Physically is, is the thing. I mean, especially mentally, because um, you know you you can't do nothing for your your daughter. You can't right. do nothing for your kid. Helpless. You know, you're helpless. Like you know the prayers and and things that goes up definitely came back down. So you know you know um, so we always you know you know black folks we always thank God. I'm gonna thank God. I ain't gonna tell you no lie. Um, you know I talk to him that people might think I'm crazy. Might have seen me talking to myself, but. I'm talking to God, so leave me alone. You know what I'm saying? But uh, at the end of the day, on flights, you know, on flights, you know, yeah, that's what I got to make sure Harp all right on flights. <laughs> but I mean, you know, once again, you know, when you're a true teammate or a true friend, that's what friends do. That's what um, teammates do. They should do that. Have your back. Um, I thank God. The worst thing for for me, I think, would it be having a, a teammate that you lose. 
going to see. You know, I know some teams has been through that. Mm -hmm. You know, from a uh, Karan was Kareem but, uh, Butler. Karan, yeah. Was Karan Butler, who I always heard was a great guy. Used to Absolutely. Speak. Um, that that'd be tough for me. You know, to to see one of my teammates go through something like that, and so seeing your daughter go through that, and seeing how, I don't people realize. Y'all might look at Harp now. We don't. We, both of us don't gain weight, but he can <laughs> He got. Go he there? got out of there quick. <laughs> Why do you have to go there? I was just letting him know how quick you was. Um, but um, you know, once again, uh, that's what friends is for. You know, sometimes your friends is better than your family. That's facts. Yeah, that's facts. Now we 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 got to get to a little bit of the court because I feel oh. like. You were sensational as a player, mm -hmm. not a guy that people enjoyed playing against. Bring up the first one, because I, you know what? Bring up the dunk contest. Go ahead and bring that well, up. Well, I definitely have to speak bring, on that. Bring, bring that up. Bring that I'll, up. I, I tell you what I'll do is I'll give you my opinion on the dunk contest. And mm -hmm. I literally, I, you know, I've seen you dunk a lot yeah. in games and practice, all of that. Yeah. But I'm bringing it up simply because I think if I was there, I could have saved you. I. True or false, we do a segment called Fact or Fiction on this show, right? Yeah. Fact or Fiction, you tired yourself out because you were running from one end of the court to another. The, the thing, the thing that's a, that, that could be a, a, a true statement. I, I'll give it a true statement because... Yes. Give it a fact. I'm going to give it a fact uh, because... Um, when I used to do dunk contests, and people don't realize, they changed the rules that year. Mm -hmm. We had to do three to four dunks. If you miss, you still got to keep going. Right. You had to do three or four dunks in a minute and 30 seconds. Oh, I, I wasn't aware. So that was the first year they changed the rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the reason I go back there, I, I'm like a triple jumper. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm, I like to feel my jump. So a lot of times I like to take off. But mm -hmm. that was good. And that's how I always did dunk contests, because I never had to do three dunks or four dunks in a minute and 30 seconds, back to back to back. Uh, but that probably was the worst dunk contest. Uh, right. It was worse for me. Uh, probably the, all the guys I, I could say probably would be. Uh, we had Brent Berry run twice <laughs> without dribbling the basketball, <laughs> step across the line and take off, and won it with just two two dunks like that. Right. Um, because a, a, a dunk contest is meant for you to rotate, mm -hmm. you know, get your thoughts together. Yes. You know, um, so in the next year, I thought the next year the dunk contest was even worse. Because <laughs> they changed the rules again. again yeah. They had the Ferris wheel right. with all the old dunks from Michael Jordan, Dominique yeah. Wilkins, um, so, you know, Hot Rod. Not hot, well, who was, was uh, what's his name? His son played I, in. It was Spud um, actually in there, Gerald Wickle? Gerald Wickle? Not Gerald, Wickle. but they had a lot of the old school dunkers in there. Yeah. And so when you spun the wheel, you had to do that dunk. Mm -hmm. Go back and look at this. This is a, this, this, I will. These dunk contests are back to back. And I'll never forget, um, uh, what's his name? He played, used to play for Houston. Ah, boy, I'm bad on names. Uh, number three. Uh, used to play for Houston, played at University of Steve Francis. Yes. Spun the wheel, got a, um, I think it was a Michael Jordan one-legged jumper mm -hmm. dunk. Mm -hmm. Steve Francis is a two-leg jumper. Right. So what, he can't do that dunk. He never he never jumps off one leg. Yeah. So that dunk contest. He gathered himself. Yeah, he gathered himself. He goes yeah. off two legs. Yes. Not yes, one. Sir. So mm -hmm. go back and look at that. That that was even the worst. And then that's when they came back up with Vince Carter mm. that next that third year. This. Yes. <laughs> where he stayed. I'll Oba. never forget that. <laughs> Oba. And but they also what they did with that dunk contest, because they wanted to change the rules. Uh, they felt like the dunk contest was getting bored um, right before I had got into it. And um, to me, they made it even more bored trying to do three dunks in a minute and 30 seconds. And then the next year, they go right to that Ferris wheel and um, do that. And they, it was the worst dunk contest, too. And um, so, but when they did Vince Carter, they went back to the format of rotating mm -hmm. dunkers. Mm -hmm. And that's when you got one of the best dunk contests. Then you had to use a guy for a prop. Yeah. You know, with a T Mac. Bounce it off there, and that's when Vince went between the legs, windmill. So that dunk contest was unbelievable, and, and ever since it's been 
up on the rise. But um, yeah, that was that was the worst. Uh, you know, that was the worst for me. That was the worst night for me. Uh, but I, I used it. It's, it's crazy. I, I I take little stuff like this. I used it to my advantage to mm-hmm. as an edge to play basketball. Because mm. one thing about you know you get fans. You get you got fans. You got people who know the game. Mm-hmm. You got players who knows the game. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you got some people who just don't know basketball. They think if you can dunk, you, you <laughs> right. can play. <laughs> right. uh, and so what I what I always said, people they was like, "Yo, he can't dunk. Yeah, he can't play." Okay, I'm about to <laughs> show. <you> play. <laughs> I'm about to show them. Where, where my career high at? I had 35 with a game winning three yeah. in San Antonio. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Once again, I, I always took I took things, you know, to kept it to myself and, and just kept a little memory. Yeah. Okay, yeah. this was this took is how we're gonna on do it. It. I took notes on everything. Yeah, yeah. So for me, uh, I just had to prove everybody that yo, just because I messed up in the dunk contest, I did a, I didn't realize I did a layup. Right. That's how tired I was. <laughs> right. <laughs> I didn't realize I did a layer to throw it out like that. Man, and I made never, it. I'll never forget that. I that made part. it and put English on it. <laughs> they didn't give you should have gave me 30, 35 <laughs> points. But um, you know, once again, I, I, it's part of my career. It's part of my mm-hmm. my Absolutely. my history. It's part I, of the memories. You know, the memories. Heard. But like yeah. I say, that those memories helped me to probably even get on that court. Yeah. I, you know, I want to play off of that, Dan, mm-hmm. because you know, I, I got I was the first round pick. Uh, 11th pick in the 83-84 draft. Everybody doesn't have that luxury. I talk yeah. to Avery Johnson a lot about that, mm-hmm. about his process to getting to the league. Mm-hmm. It's different, and certainly it was different for you. Yeah. Um, what 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 kept you in it, man? You know what 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 kept you driving? And of course, it part of it is that edge. But what kept you driving when when it looked so bleak for you? Well, I mean, what kept me driving was. I felt like I could play on this next level. Mm-hmm. You know, hearing my college coach, uh, Jeff Capel, said, um, you know, he he told me, you know, he thought that I could play on the next level, and I heard him say it on uh, one of our coaches' shows, and that just took me to another level that made me work even harder to get better, to learn how to shoot better. Uh, but I, I, I wouldn't quit. I mean, I had twice as I left college uh, I got drafted to the Raleigh Bull Frogs as the Glo- Global Basketball Association, which was in Raleigh, North Carolina, and they used mostly all of their mm-hmm. older players, mm-hmm. you know, to play. Uh, Chris Corciani was on the team. Wow. Chuck North Nevitt. Carolina State. Yeah, all North Carolina. Chuck Nevitt, um, Rizzo Charles, rest in peace, who had the dunk for the national well, championship. The Houston Cougars. Yes, he was on the team. Uh, had a couple other guys, and then we had some other guys who would just sprinkle in and. So, you know, I got cut uh, going at it with Chris Corciani. You know, he and he's the he's the godfather of NC State in Raleigh. And they re- let, they released me, let me go. Monty Tile was the head coach mm. who used to play for North Carolina State. I think he won the championship with North Carolina State as well. And then, um, you know, for me, um, as I was still trying to make my way through the league, uh, I finally got a good situation, played in the CBA for about a month, and then I got released from there because one of the coaches, one of his old point guard, Kevin Mackey, uh, was the coach. He wanted Miles McFadden. That's, he always brought him every way he went, and Miles McFadden was his guy. So he ended up cutting me, went to the Global, Ball, Global Basketball Association the next year, the same thing. Started tearing the league up, the league folded. Uh, the league folded, and then I had to go get a real nine to five job. I worked at a yarn factory. Mm. You know, I cooked the yarn, take it out, cook it, put it in a big old barrel. Once it's done, take it back out, box it up, <laughs> tape, mm-hmm. and uh, I went from eleven to eleven at night to seven in the morning, cooking it and, and cooking the yarn and, and boxing it up and sleeping on a. Uh, <laughs> Incredible. Sleeping on some, some, some boxes. What a story, sleeping man. on some boxes back there while he was cooking. Um, so that you know, <laughs> people don't realize the things I, I went through. And then after I left there and got back to the USBL, and the USBL was one of my biggest leagues mm-hmm. because we had um uh, Marty Blake who used to be a Yeah, I know Marty was a scout. Yeah, he used to be a scout. Yeah, town scout. And he used to come he scouted uh, all the college all the, guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he used to come to our games and uh so, you know, they said if Marty, Marty Blake said you could play 
You can play. You can play. Yeah. And uh, so that that was the big league that got me into NBA camp, summer camp. Uh, my first year I played with Atlanta Trojan. We ended up getting beat in the championship. We played at Jacksonville. I'm sorry, North Florida in uh, Jacksonville, uh, which was like I said, I always felt like God always had me on a pattern, which is ironic. That's where Orlando used, used to do their training camp. Mm-hmm. You know, we used to do our training camp at North Florida. So, end up, we got beat, got back to uh, Atlanta. I'm thinking I'm going home. Let me get ready to try to get another job somewhere. And uh, coach was cutting our last check. We was only getting two hundred. We was only getting two hundred dollars a week. Oh, wow. You know, that's what I was playing on. Yeah. $200. I was like, coach, I don't even care. Right. Just take care of my code and car note. I don't even need no money. I, I figured it out. And so. And all due respect, that's Trump change for real. Yeah. At, at, no, it is. is. It is. But when you're grinding, yeah, of you, don't, you don't worry about things like I'm that. I'm playing for that. Mm-mm. I'm playing for a bigger cause. And it happened after he cut that check. He said, you need to get your stuff together. We're going into Atlanta Hawks summer camp. And I went in Atlanta Hall summer camp. Stacey Alderman was uh, was there, and Rodney Monroe was on the team. We played at NC State, and you know everything. And so, uh, didn't have a great camp, but I, I I made the team to go down to West Palm Beach Community mm-hmm. College, <laughs> my hometown. Well, your hometown. <laughs> it played. Um, we played. Uh, Miami was hosting it. Uh, we had Charlotte, Miami, Atlanta, mm-hmm. and Orlando. And uh, I never forget. Uh, Material Green played with um, Orlando. I think he just got drafted. He was strong. He was short, strong, quick. And uh, I got a wakening call. He was just, he was doing what you usually do. Handling the guys. Hand, hand check. Hand check. <laughs> and it was controlling me hard. But I'm like, wait, <laughs> wait a minute. So I ain't gonna never forget Randy Witten calling me to the side. He was coaching. And I was a break or somebody shooting free throw. He said, hey, he said, uh, hey Daryl, you got to be a man out here. He said, mm. You can't let him just handle you like that. And that stuck with me. That stuck with me. And from there, every year in a summer camp, I just got better. And even in, in West Palm Beach Community College. Know it well. I got a quadruple double there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was the only guy in that league to get it. Um, Charlie Ward got close to it. My guy nah, played with Charlie played, in New York. Yeah, he played in the USBL for a little bit when he first came out. But I, I had like 43. I had uh, 13, 10, and 10. I also had 10 turnovers. <laughs> I was going to ask. <laughs> you know, which which one did you get? Well, yeah, we lost it over time. But um, <laughs> I even came I came off the bench. Yeah. I came off the bench and had a great game. But um, that, that gym always was special. And by the time I, my third year when I really got it, we, we played in that gym again in uh, Summer League. And this is when I went to Spain, and from Spain I joined the NBA at the end of the year. But I, I played in that league, and I never forget. I had I had gained so much confidence over the years, the last two years, that it just it, it, it just fed right into where I, I was going. I told that I told that summer league up. Um, had like 15, I think I had 15. We had, we won every game. I had 15. And I was with Orlando at this time. Mm-hmm. Um, had 17 with the game winner. You know, they, they ISO 1-4 flat. You know, at guard, you want to hear that. Mm-hmm. The last, you know that. Got an up and under game winner. Mm-hmm. And then the last game had like 20-something against Charlotte, which is, you know, my hometown was Gastonia, North Carolina, right outside of Charlotte. Yes, and uh, Derek Hancock, I stole the ball from him. He was one of them leapers. And I just... I was like that gym. That gym had my, not my name on my heart. <laughs> I reversed and turned that ball backwards on him. Boom! And that's why I was like, oh, I'm ready. <laughs> so I went over to Spain. I, I, Orlando was wanting to bring me in camp. Didn't, didn't, didn't fully guarantee me. So I decided I'm going to go over, yeah. over to Spain, play yeah. for $100,000. I got $100,000. Uh, tax free. That's tax free. They, yeah, they, yeah. you know, they paid your agent over there. That's the great thing about playing overseas. They pay your agent fee. So everything worked out. Last game of the season, got the call to come right back to uh, sign with Orlando, and I've been there in, in the NBA ever since. Mm. Ninety four, ninety five. What a journey! What a story! You know, we before we got on the air, mm-hmm. we, we we talked about not talking so much about basketball. Yeah, and one of the things that I missed early in this this conversation is I don't think people realize that you played a lot of football though, and yeah. you hold records. As a kicker, 
can't get over that. Hey, that's, that's, yeah. <laughs> that I can't get over. But yeah, we did. I actually, when I was working over at uh, CBS 11 at 21 yeah. TXA, yeah. I actually did a story on you over at SMU, right? <laughs> Of yeah. you kicking field goal. Yeah, I gotta I, tell I was, you, bro. I was kicking him in Shit. regular yeah. cleats too. Then yes, I need a, I need my kicking shoe. But, but listen, my foot yeah, was hurt. That but day. listen, mm-hmm. you blew me away. Yeah. As a kicker, and you hold mm-hmm. records at yeah. your your uh, your college. Yeah. So for me, um, you know, I um, I played 13 years of football. Mm-hmm. The only year I played high school basketball was my senior year. Mm. That's the only year I ever tried out. Um, Coach let me be on the team because they had already started the season because our football team, we got almost to the state championship game, uh, which I broke the fullback leg <laughs> the last day in, in um, practice. He come through. They used to put us on the scout team, and we, me and my boy Mark Pratt, uh, Pratt and we used to hit. See, people, didn't, people, don't, people, people don't know. I got toughness. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know. They think I'm a kicker. They, yeah, they think I'm a kicker. Yeah. yeah. But I got toughness. And yeah. um, and I mean, I never forget fullback came. And I probably lost the state championship for it. I, I, I really did. I, I, I think I really lost it because our fullback was pretty good. And I got on my knees. He came through the line. And bam. And all I heard him screaming. You know, and I was like, oh, shit. What I don't did. Right. Play the next – Play the next two days later. It was Wednesday. That was our last hitting day. We had to move one of our tailbacks to fullback. He fumbled twice on the goal line when they got the ball. It was Greensboro Page, one of the powerhouse teams at that time. We ended up getting beat 13 to 6, I think. 13 to 7. We would have scored, probably got the extra point, and won the game. But yeah, but my, my special is kicking. And uh for all these Cowgirl fans. Um, uh, I'm a, I'm a, Washington, I'm a, Dallas, I'm a Washington commander. Y'all can call us Washington Commodores. <laughs> yes. But uh, one of my, my, my idol was Mark Mosley. Mm-hmm. Um, what's crazy is, I, I mean, I, 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 I knew he was a great kicker. Uh, people don't know this. A lot of people, NFL people know this. He's the only field, he's the only kicker in the NFL to win MVP as a kicker. MVP. That's how good he was. That's why I followed him. Mm. And then I ended up my senior year, my, my fifth year of college. Uh, I played my first year. I walked on in football. And my my next, my second year, I had to get my books together. I almost told you I almost flunked out. Mm-hmm. Got my books together. My third year, played basketball. Fourth year, played basketball. My last year, my fifth year, um, my last year of playing in college, the field goal kicker quit right before the season started. Mm-hmm. My college coach Jeff Capum, rest in peace. And he um he can he called me in and I was like, yo man, I need you to do something for me. I was like, what's up, coach? He's like, uh, you know, I, first of all, I thought I was in trouble. Hart. He had all the guys. I'm gonna eat dinner. He got all the guys. Your coach looking for you. Mm-hmm. Oh, when well, you hear that, man, oh, what? <laughs> he don't know if it's you up or down. I don't did, you know. Yeah, yeah. So came game in his office. He's like, yo man, I need you to do me a favor. I was like, what, coach? He said, the field goal kicker quit. Can you kick for him? Like, oh, sh- coach, I ain't kicked in a long time. I said, plus, it's hot as hell out there. He said, man, all you got to do is go out there for 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. You don't even have to put your uniform on, put a hammer on, go out there and kick, and you can leave. I was like, all right, I tried. Mm-hmm. So I went out there for a couple of days. Hart put the hammer on there. Sweat was so, so hot. Sweat was just drenching down my face. I'm kicking. Um, I mean, I'm kicking the ball, and then I was like, got ghosts for like two days. Mm-hmm. Didn't go to practice. They couldn't find you. Coach didn't know. I was like, man, I ain't. I ain't. <laughs> Got in the cafeteria. Them boys like, yo, coach looking for you again, man. I already knew what it was this time. Walk in there, he's like, hey, man. He said, hey, man, I thought you said you were going to help me, man. Come on, man. We can get some stuff done with the team. I said, coach, man, it's hot as hell out there. He said, come on, man. Do this, do this, for, do this for us, man. Come. I said, all right, coach. I go back out. When that end up setting the school record. The first wow. First time I said it against for Bobby Bobby's Bowden, uh son Terry Bowden. Mm-hmm. He was at Sanford College yeah. in Alabama. Kicked the forty seven yarder that day. Came back uh, against Ben Cole, who used to play for uh, uh, tight end for New England Patriots. He went to Livingstone College in Salisbury, North Carolina. 
he got drafted from from uh, Salisbury. That's how good he was as a tight end. Yeah. Division, that's a Division two black college. That day we had homecoming, and, um, and the day before Hart, my my kicking coach, he was like, "We're doing special teams and we're kicking." We got it. I am booming the ball. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can hear that ball go. Booming it. The next, the, the next kick I did, I kicked that ball so good. He walked up to me and said, "Look, man." He said, "I know you don't care." I said, "I know you. You don't fell in love with basketball." Mm -hmm. He said, "If you want to kick it in the NFL, you can kick it in the NFL." Oh wow! He said, "You can kick it in the NFL." <laughs> yeah. Because I had one of Mark Mosley shoes, Tom Dempsey shoes. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Block shoe. Yeah. The next day, I homecoming. I kicked. I, I won the game for us in the second half. I was the only one to score. I kicked two forty. I kicked a forty-seven yarder and a thirty-five yarder. For, for game to win the game, thirteen. Oh my god, thirteen to seven. Left there and went and played the N squad scrimmage game, <laughs> eating some Pringles. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was my fame to glory. But well, um, listen, I um, not to cut you off, but oh, you I, did. I I can truly and I will speak for you when it comes to being an all around athlete, because we've been playing golf and I'll save that for another time. And you've been uh, you've been getting it in. On the golf course. Don't, don't, oh, don't, oh, 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 hold on, hold on. We don't want to go hold there. On. No, no, no. We're I have something else more important. Hold on. No, we're going to talk. We're going to talk. I, oh, I also got to say this, too. Uh, you know what was amazing to me? I had a chance to see Shannon Sharp. Okay. And he went to Savannah State. We played yeah, in yeah. homecoming. I just want to say this, but I saw him put on a show at our stadium. I was like, man, who is this kid right here? And then to go see him go on and be a tight end. He was a yeah. Wide receiver at that Hall time. of Fame tight end. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, that's why I tell you, all these kids, it don't matter what division you're in, from Division mm. One, Division Two, NAIA, Division Three, if you can play, you can play. They're going to find you. Mm. Hop, get to the golf. Let me hear you. No, golf, I forget sorry. about the golf. I, 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 I want to hear about the golf. No, you don't want to talk about the golf. Your overall ability as an athlete. That's what okay. I was talking about on that oh, one. Okay. However, yeah. what I want to get to is you talked about Mosley. <laughs> And being one of the few guys to accomplish what he accomplished. Yes. But as an NBA player, you have a very unique record in the N NBA where you were named player, I'm sorry, most improved player and six man of the year. Yes. In the same year. Same year. Close the door on that. We after you explain what that felt like and what that was, yeah. we can we can get off air. I think we have plenty. Yeah, and that and that was coming off a um, a season injury, injury um, shoulder surgery. Uh, toward my rotator's cuff, uh, I never forget. Uh, Chuck Daly called me into his office. I mean, his uh, hotel room in, in Indiana because that's why I did the MRI. And uh, I just I, I was like, it just. Something ain't right with it. Yeah. So I couldn't even, at one point, at the end, I couldn't even hold my arm up by myself. It would just fall down on its own. And uh, so we, that's when we came. Came. Uh, I came to his room. He told me, you look, I'm going to fight for you. He said, you've done a good job. You play hard for me. He said, um, you're going to miss the le you're gonna miss the whole rest of the season, 32 games. He said, you have to do surgery. Um, and so... I did the surgery and everything. Oh boy, that was that was probably one of the toughest mm -hmm. doing that surgery because they put me in a sling for about a month because mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm 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 hyper. You already know I'm hyper and and uh, not only that, but can I share how hyper? Yeah, you can share. You how use five before every game. How many you used to put? You used to get your coffee. Yeah, and put ten, five. About five sugars. Five sugars yeah. in the coffee. Yeah. That's beyond hyper, yeah. but carry on. And that and, and you know, and that and that <laughs> came and that came after after the surgery when I Yeah. Because you remember that's the year I did the surgery, the next year we had the lockout. Mm-hmm. Uh, two thousand. That's when we played ninety nine, two thousand. Yeah, that's when we played fifty game season. Mm -hmm. And we played three games back to back to back that year. And you had two of them, I think, two teams, each team had like two Got to play three games in a row, and uh, so that's once, the same year I put it on you 
when y'all came to L.A. Remember? Go ahead. No, no, <laughs> no, no. You put it. Y'all won. Y'all came back on us. Y'all came back on us on no, NBC. No, I, I didn't mean to you, No, you ain't because you was with the Lakers. You know, y'all came back. We were kicking y'all tail too. Cause that thing. That's when Dennis Rodman came back that <laughs> yes, night he did. That, when he was ghost. But um, so yeah, I used to um, and I used to do. What, what made me start drinking coffee was I never forget Chuck Daly. Um, we was in Golden State. Mm-hmm. And we had lost a couple. So we had started struggling a little bit. We was playing well as a team. We still, you know, we had a nice, we was like the second team in the division. And Chuck Daly at, at shoot around say, I don't know what y'all got to do. You know, drink, drink, drink some coffee or have a Coca-Cola, get some caffeine. Mm-hmm. You need to do it. So I drank <laughs> coffee that night. Right. Um, drunk coffee before the game that night. And I used to make it for my stepdad. You know, I used to make it. That's a, but I never really drunk it. I always taste it, make sure it was sweet. Mm-hmm. Man, I came out, drunk that coffee, had 21 and 8. <laughs> I remember. I don't know what else I had. We ended up winning the game. Um, and ever, ever since then, I, I just drunk coffee from there. And then that's when I won the six man and most improved that same season. So, and that was just coming off a, a shoulder. Thank God we um, we had the lockout because it gave me extra time to, to heal to heal and build yeah. it back up. Yeah. yeah so. But what, what does that say for, for your career, man? You know, a lot of guys just want to be most improved. A lot of guys just want to be the six man. But to accomplish that in the same year? I, I, you had to, and you're the only one that's ever done it, correct? Yeah, I'm the only one who ever done it. Um, you know, for me, it was it was incredible because the guys who I I, I, I beat was Rasheed Wallace, mm-hmm. uh, an unbelievable player, Jalen Rose, mm. unbelievable player. Um, and you know, um, great guys that six man at that time to come off the bench, and they could have been starters on on teams on certain teams. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me to do it, I mean, it just, you know, I, I was just out there playing basketball, to be honest with you. It, it made me feel like I was playing in the park, you know. Uh, but I think the one thing that I, I had was I had the energy and the multiple efforts, of not just one effort, two effort, three. I never quit on plays. And um, a lot of times I, I find the ball somehow you know, from rebounding to whatever, p- pushing the ball back, getting guys shots or, you know, whatever. But it just, I don't know. I, 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 had, I had a different gear. Um, I had a different gear. I mean, you, you would have told me I would have been in the NBA <laughs> um, when I started my journey. Uh, I, I, I'm be honest, I wouldn't believe you. Right. <laughs> I wouldn't believe myself. Um, but, you know, to – Think about it and even still be here right now because uh, a lot of my coaches, you know, I always used to tell me, keep your keep your, um, your information, your, you know, all the stuff with the, that coaches and teams give you, your mm-hmm. playbooks and stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And because they say you're going to be a coach, you know, um, and I'm going on my 17th year as assistant coach. Mm. So, you know, just being around the game has been fun. Um, I was you know, going there. Because, you know, your body, yeah. you know, you, you know how your body, my body told me I was 40. Yeah. You can't stop. I was 40. That's what people yeah. don't get, that when you take off running. I told Patrick you and me, <laughs> you take off running, you can't stop. The ball is going the other way. Yeah. And you have to do a full stop, like breaks, and then turn around. That's when it's time to retire, no well, question. Well, I couldn't take off. I, <laughs> at least you took off. Yeah, I was able to take uh, off. I just couldn't stop. Yeah, um, but it's amazing. They, You know, you hear a lot of guys when you see – Especially NFL players. That, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I never forget John Elway uh, did his press conference. He was like, he said, they always told me your body would tell you. Yeah. And uh, my body told me in a workout. Uh, Phoenix had that. I was trying to play my 15th year. Phoenix had to sign somebody because they only had like 12 or 13 guys. So they had to sign one guy. And uh, Shaq was on the team at the time, Steve Nash, all Amari, Amari. And, you know, I, I already knew it. I knew it probably about the first 10 minutes. My body was like, no, can't do it no more. But, you know, having coaching and then uh, me going through a divorce, having basketball has uh, been so good and so so comfortable for me, mm-hmm. you know, in my life because uh, I get a chance to – to not play it anymore, but I get a chance to still be around it. Mm. I get a chance to hear the, the, the shit talking, <laughs> the locker room talk. 
You know, guys, Dodo, Luca, all yeah. those guys. Yes, sir. Tim Holloway, Jr. You know. A lot of shit talking. Shut right? up, DA. You know, you get, get out of the locker room, you know. <laughs> you know, when you become a coach, you know, they, they treat you real bad when you retire. But I, I enjoy it. It makes right. me laugh. It, it's, it's to be honest with you, I wake up ready to go to go to work, go to practice. <laughs> yeah. Listen, DA, man, let me let me say this. Thank you, first off. Right? Yes, sir. You know that. And I didn't expect anything but 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 some real shit, yeah, right? Yeah. And the thing that makes you you, man, is your passion. Yeah, I appreciate uh, it. Both as a coach, as a player, as a person. Don't ever lose that, man. You, I appreciate you, that. You, ke you kept me young for a long time, and I appreciate you. Thanks for coming on. This was absolutely you. amazing. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, thanks. He didn't want me to talk about his... Uh... No, 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 go. <laughs> Next time. We'll do he didn't that. want me to talk about the we'll guy. We'll do that another time. <laughs> You wear me out. There's no question. He, I, you, he used to beat I'm, me up a lot, but now. I'm paying you money that I never thought I'd be paying you. How about that? But thanks, man. Sincerely. I appreciate it. All right. Man. All Definitely right. that. <laughs> man, that was outstanding, man. I don't care what anybody says. Oh, man. That's been my best, my best little podcast right there. Oh, that's good, man. People are going to tune in to that one.